Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. After two years of negotiations, the United States, together with our international partners, has achieved something that decades of animosity has not, a comprehensive long-term deal with Iran that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Well, that was then and this is now, and I'm Michael Savage, and I thank you for tuning into the show. Uh, we know what happened after uh, Chamberlain said that uh, they would never go to war again with Germany. We also know what happened when the liar-in-chief, Bill Clinton, and his gun mall, Hillary Clinton, were in the White House. They gave New, uh, North Korea the ability to develop a nuclear uh, weapon while saying they didn't. And now North Korea, as you well know, is a terrorist state that threatens everyone on the planet with nuclear weapons. And by the way, missiles capable of firing them to the United States of America, thanks to the Democrat National Committee, uh, giving them the rocket technology. So there's nothing new under the sun. Obama is so desperate to, you would say, build a legacy, win another Nobel Prize. I would say no. Now, some people are saying Obama has caved to Iran. I'm not so sure that that's the correct headline, although I used it on michaelsavage.com to describe the deal. Is it that Obama caved to Iran or that Obama has finally completed Iran's plan and, uh, let us say, is he their Manchurian candidate? There's very little left to discuss with regard to this issue. People who know a lot more about it than I do, such as the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, says that the deal paves the way for, Iranian, for an Iranian bomb. There's nothing more I can add to that. They've seen the deal. I haven't seen the deal. Others, such as David Horowitz of the Times of Israel, say that the 16 reasons the nuke deal is an Iranian victory and a Western catastrophe can be spelled out in his article. And he spelled it out in his article, which you can read for yourself. And so I, as an ordinary and informed American who does this for a living, have very little to add to this discussion. <clears throat> what can I say? It's a good deal or a bad deal? I don't know. I would say any deal with a terrorist state is a bad deal. Because what you're doing is you're capitulating to terrorism and to threats. Never make a mistake about it. Iran is a terror-sponsoring nation. Iran is a terrorist-sponsoring nation that has the blood of soldiers, our soldiers, our Marines, on their hands. Moreover, Iran has not released three or four prisoners that they're holding. Why? Why? Why are they not releasing them? Why is the United States of America under this great negotiator, the demon in the White House, who, by the way, I, I have to tell you, I look at his eyes as he speaks, and I see a madman. I see demonic eyes staring back at me. I can hardly gaze at the screen. When Obama speaks, his eyes have a strange glow to them. And I look at the screen, and I have to turn away from his gaze. I feel as though I'm looking into the eyes of a devil, or the devil himself. One man's opinion, but let's put aside my emotional reaction to this president, why, if Iran wants peace with America, have they not released the detained Americans? Moreover, John Kerry, perhaps the most spineless Secretary of State, and that, that is saying a lot in modern times, the most spineless Secretary of State in modern times, did not get the detained Americans released for this historic giveaway to Iran? Why is that? Why would Iran not even give up the prisoners they're holding, American prisoners, including a former U.S. Marine? Why would they not give them up if they want peace with the United States? Answer, because they don't really have any intention of having peace with the United States. Moreover, they want to show the world what weaklings and fools John Kerry and Barack Obama uh, are. Now, if you care to chime in on this Iran situation, you can do so. We have to wait and see after all. There's a lot of hyperbole surrounding it. I don't really know the details. I know this. I know this, which is that Iran has never 
respected the terms of any agreement it's ever signed with the West. And I don't expect them to change their behavior now. We also know that Obama has a certain affinity for Iran, owing to one of his chief advisors, Valerie Jarrett, his, who is of Iranian heritage and, have a, and has a suspicious benevolence towards this dictatorship. Let's put it to you that way. That's topic number one. Topic number two is a very emotional one for me. And it's a topic I never, ever talk about. A video came out <clears throat> showing a Planned Parenthood official taped, secretly taped, discussing the sale of aborted baby body parts. I am kind of strong when I read stories. I do this for a living. I've done it for 21 years. When I watched, <clears throat> sorry, the chief doctor for this death worshiping organization, Planned Parenthood, Dr. Nukatola, eating food, drinking wine, and boasting about selling baby body parts to who she thought were representatives of a startup biotech firm in the business of buying fetal body parts for medical and scientific research, I started to weep. A part of me started to weep looking at it. I felt that I was looking at Dr. Nukatola in, as the face of the new Nazi government. I felt that Planned Parenthood is an arm of Hitler's regime. I felt as I watched it that if we had a legitimate federal government, Dr. Nukatola would be indicted immediately for violating federal law, which prohibits the sale of baby body parts. The eight minute edited video <coughs> was released today by an amazing organization, the Center for Medical Progress. And this so-called Dr. Nukatola can be seen talking about a menu of parts that she is working on. The video shows what is purported to be an actual online form from STEM Express complete with a pull down menu for quote, brain, heart, veins and arteries attached, lungs, liver, liver and thymus, spleen, large intestine and so on. The order form from these Nazis also specifies the gestational range of the unborn baby from four weeks upwards. This is a three hour video shot with Dr. Hitler Nukatola's knowledge in a California restaurant on July 25th last summer. You could watch it, I could play it for you, but I'd rather not. It's gonna make people sick. I'd like to know where the heart and soul of America is. We are not talking solely about abortion right now. We are talking about selling a baby's organs, live organs, just before they're crushed and sent to the trash bin. And these are girls and boys who went to college. These are the heartless, soulless ghouls of today. These are the Nazis of our time who would just as quickly put you into a concentration camp and sell your body parts if they could do it for a profit, in my opinion. Now let's go on to the other issues that have attracted my attention, which are many. And they can all be seen basically on my website, michaelsavage.com. And the first uh, article on the top right is this. Escaped Mexican drug lord has California driver's license. Gee, what's new about that? He has a California driver's license? They print them in basements all over California. If I want to renew mine, I have to wait for th about three, six, eight hours in the Department of Mexican Voting booth. That's what they've turned it in on the Governor Brown. The Department of Mexican Voting. It's not a DMV anymore. It's a Department of Mexican Voting. Next article, Iran to continue centrifuges and missile development. Nothing to stop them. Oh, I cried watching this Nazi BIT. Hitler had vermin like her killing Jews, I wrote. That's my headline for the YouTube. Take a look at Dr. Nukatola stuffing her fat, disgusting face with food and slurping wine, that pig, as she talks about the sale of baby body parts. And we have no legitimate government to move in and arrest these ghouls, none whatsoever. And then we have the case of the 30-year-old girl, woman, executed by the illegal alien here in San Francisco a, a while back, and a weird, weird interview with the so-called head of the Department of Homeland Security, a man who nobody knows who he is, where he came from, perhaps the dumbest man in the history of the world. They put a suit on this moron, Jed Johnson, DHS, they ask him, they ask this idiot, stooge of Obama, about sanctuary city laws if they're violating federal law and the moron says, I'm not aware, I don't know the answer, I have no idea. This is the country under the devil himself. There's more 
to discuss on the show, and I'm sure you're going to want to discuss it. And I should take a call to set things going. Again, the phone number here is 855-400-7282. Donald Trump is another issue. Donald Trump is another important issue. He said that Iran is laughing at us. He is right. By the way, I fear for Obama, uh, sorry, I fear for Trump's life because this Mexican cartel leader who walked out of prison with the help of the Mexican government, obviously, and I would say with the help of members of the United States government, probably, he has threatened Donald Trump's life. I fear for Donald Trump. Donald Trump reached out to the FBI uh, to help him. I'm not sure that this FBI would help him. I'm not so sure this FBI would help any American under threat of an illegal alien. Again, these are dangerous times and they're going to get much more dangerous. Obama is demonic and is an attempt to upset the entire world with his radical left-wing pro-Iranian agenda. And he's got a lot of months left to do it. Let's begin with one call out of New York City. WABC, Angelo, go ahead. Make your point. Hi, how, hi. I say that I don't agree with Obama with everything, but I do believe that we should have some type of negotiated settlement with the Iranians because the alternative is is, is way worse. Uh, where do you get your opinion from? Where did you read it in the Daily News? Actually, no. This is just. I mean, I don't really follow politics, but as far as like from what happened with Iraq, with the whole war disaster, I just think it's better we should just instead of going into war again with another middle eastern countries because we should try to at least try to negotiate some type of uh, but but why would you okay let's take your your position and discuss it do you agree or disagree that iran has sponsored terrorism around the world um like i said i'm not i'm not really first on the whole political situation there so in other words you're, you're in other words you're an ignoramus you know nothing but you're sure that obama did the right thing no, I'm not. How, could, how can you derive an opinion if you don't? How can you derive an opinion about Iran if you don't even know Iran's history? Well, I know that we actually overthrew their government. That I we, we read in. The oh, book. so you do know something about Iran? So you're more knowledgeable than you lead us to believe. Well, no. And, and what you're doing is you're taking you're taking you're taking the typical anti-U.S. position, aren't you? That we're the bad guys. No, no, no. Having a country not go to war, that's not being anti-U.S. That's just being like, I just don't, don't want war anymore. You don't want any war. So what if Iran develops a nuclear bomb while saying they're not going to develop one? And what if they developed a missile technology with the help of, let us say, the Soviet Union or North Korea? Would you feel that you made the right decision then? Well, remember, the deal is, 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 is ensure that you, with the, the inspections will be there, so there's no way they could hide what they're doing because it's going to have rigorous inspections. Oh, no, my friend. You, you said you didn't know much about the deal, and you're not very political. It sounds like you know the deal very well, and I wouldn't doubt that you're not reading from, that you're not reading from an Iranian uh, uh, mimeograph sheet. It sounds to me like you work for Iran. Do you really work for the U.N.? Are you a representative of the Iranian government? Because you seem to know an awful lot about all the deals, and you happen to be mistaken about what you just said. You know an I know that Iran prohibits inspections, except in very limited places and very limited times. You know that. From what I heard about Ke- what Kerry said, it sounds to me that they're going to have rigorous inspection going on. From who? From what? From what? Um, or, um, um, the news conference this morning with uh, Obama and and then Kerry. It sounds. And you and you believe John Kerry is telling the truth? Well, as I said, I still believe that it's better than going to war. So you believe that. Peace at any cost is important. Yes. At any cost. So you would capitulate to any country on earth rather than go to war. Because war only brings... All right. Thank you very much, Angelo. We appreciate that call. That's a typical position uh, of the left. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What puts you Just as Obama has written off the uh, young woman who was assassinated executed in the streets of San Francisco because she's not the right race. Remember that he he went and talked to the families of uh, several victims in the past who were of uh, the same race as he after they were murdered or found dead. He has not even sent a representative 
to the Steinle family to talk about the death of their daughter at the hands of the illegal alien from Mexico. I know this is an embarrassing situation and many people don't like hearing these things and it makes them uncomfortable. But it seems to me that there's a racial component to which situations Obama gets involved in and it's kind of frightening when you consider he's conducting a war. And it's not a war against terror regimes like Iran, is it? It's a war against America's white middle class in my estimation. Everything that I see leads me to believe that he wants to fracture the white middle class in this country before leaving office. Now you could argue with me, and I hope you will, by proving me wrong. I don't see how you can prove me wrong. But let's stay focused now on the uh, sellout to Iran and whether this is good or bad for the United States of America. As expected, Israel opposes it. I've heard Israel oppose this for years. And there's a one part of the Israel thing that bothers me, and that is this. For year, And I'm talking five years ago, Israel was warning us that Iran was, I don't know, days, weeks, months away from a nuclear weapon. Remember? They kept saying it was weeks, months, nuclear weapon, nuclear weapon. Well, it never happened. They don't have a nuclear weapon. So I truly don't know who to believe. I don't have the facts. I'm one man trying to piece it together. Admittedly, I probably read more widely than my listeners do. That's what I'm paid to do. I don't know whether Iran really has a nuclear weapon hidden somewhere. They may already have one for all I know. But I do know that Israel has been warning us for years now, crying wolf, in essence. And believe me, I'm a supporter of the state of Israel up to a certain point, not at the expense of the United States of America per se. You know, Israel's been a nation now for a long time. What is it, 70 some odd years? I, I haven't done the math. Close to it. And I mean, it's either sink or swim. They can't be a vassal state of the U.S. forever. You could look back and say that the creation of the state of Israel was a mistake. Many people do, including Jews. Some religious Jews say that. I don't. The Satmar Hasidim in Brooklyn, New York, the guys with the furry hats and the sideburns that dangle, if I'm not mistaken, they believe that the creation of the state of Israel was a mistake. So don't think that only right-wing uh, white people are concerned about us getting dragged into the Middle East. It's a very complex situation. And I'd like to know your opinion right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. If you After two years of negotiations, the United States, together with our international partners, has achieved something that decades of animosity has not. A comprehensive, long-term deal with Iran that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Total lie. This deal okay. demonstrates that American All right, diplomacy. Off, All right, he's a liar. As you well know, it's simply to get it off the table and check it off on his list. Now, you have to know who negotiated this deal. It was not John Kerry. He is just the face of the negotiation. I want to give you a name, and I want you to remember the name. The name is Wendy Sherman. You don't know who Wendy Sherman is. She's a left-wing fanatic, a former social worker, she served as the director of Emily's List, a radical left-wing political fundraising group aimed at getting, are you ready for this? Abortionists called Democrats elected. Emily's List fundamentally is composed of the same type as Dr. Nukatola, the Dr. Mengele's of our time. She was appointed to her current position in 2011 by Hil Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State. And here's the kicker for you. Are you ready? Wendy Sherman also negotiated the North Korea deal. She first served in the State Department under the Clinton administration. There is a name behind this deal with Iran. Her name is Wendy Sherman, former social worker, director of Emily's List, a political fundraising lobbying group aimed at getting abortionists, as Democrats, as women, elected. It gets worse, and I'll tell you more about it. 855-400-7282. As you can see, Planned Parenthood is so evil on every level. Not only are they evil with regard to what you can see with your own eyes, involved in the sale of baby body parts while saying they're not? Okay, watch the tape. See the woman while chomping down food and slurping wine, that Nazi piglet. See the Nazi piglets slurp wine as she talks about body parts 
of aborted fetuses is enough to make you insane to believe you're living in a country like this, that this country is so out of control on every level. But now it gets even better. One of her cohorts, someone from Emily's List, just sold the world on this Iran deal. Wendy Sherman, that's the name. Never forget it. Never, ever forget it. 855 Now, here's another element to this that we have to think about. Russia and China signed off on this deal. Now, why would Russia and China agree with Obama all of a sudden? Well, you know, Obama and China are friendly because they got everything they want from him and then some. So we understand that. But wasn't it Obama telling us that Putin is Hitler? Isn't it Obama who's trying to start a war with Russia over issues such as Ukraine? How is it that one day Obama the devil can speak out of one side of his mouth about the evils of Russia and the next day say that Russia and he are now friends over the signing of this deal with Iran? And by the way, while you're thinking about the chess game, uh, how is it that Assad, who Obama is trying to overthrow in Syria, is now totally protected with Iran and Russia on their side, on his side? Follow the bouncing ball because it's almost impossible to understand what is going on. Many of you will just take it whole and say, you know what, I don't really care. I don't really care about Iran. It's not my problem. Let them go to hell, all of them. You know what, if they get a bomb and they use it, we'll bomb them first. That's what you're saying. I can't worry about it. Well, in a way, you're right. You can't worry about it. So what can you worry about? If you can't worry about Iran and you can't worry about illegal aliens and you can't worry about abortion and you can't worry about this and you can't worry about that, then what are you listening to my show for? What are you, what are you listening for, a joke about a meatball? I'm not in the mood to talk about meatballs today. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Today I won't. But if you want to talk about the real issues of the day, uh, we can do so. 855 Let's go to WABC in New York again, Morris. Go ahead, please. You're on the great Savage Nation. And I say great, not with refer to myself, but the nation of people who listen to this show and participate in it. What's on your mind, Morris? Okay, Michael, eugenics was not pioneered by the Nazis. It was pioneered by Margaret Sanger. I know. Planned Parenthood in the early 20s, maybe even earlier than that. And it happened in the state mental hospital at Lynchburg, Virginia. Now, if you don't believe me, Michael, this is... No, 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 that I be- no, I've studied this. Margaret Sanger was a Nazi eugenicist before Hitler came around. I get it, I get it, I get it. That's the point I, I was trying to make. Oh, also another point. You said it was the Satmars. It's not the Satmars. It's another sect called the Nutre New- Carter. I- I'll spell it for you. N-U-T-R-E-I, and then the second word is K-A-R. Right, so why do those Orthodox Jews think that the creation of the state of Israel was a mistake? Uh, Michael, you'd have to ask them because I'm a scientific materialist. I mean, I just worship what I could measure and experiment with. So uh, I have no comments on religion. I'm sorry. Well, so give me a comment on politics. You're, you're obviously a, a rationalist. What do you think about this deal with Iran? Better than nothing or a disaster? Uh, it's obviously everybody is following the collective. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Carl Jung. He, in referring to any sort of totalitarian state, especially communism, he termed it a psychic infection. Not psychic in the sense of fortune telling, but psychic as far as you know, the mental, the uh, intellectual and emotional components of our mind. It's a psychic infection. That's all I could say. Wait, wait what is a psychic infection? Liberalism? Not, uh, liberalism, Marxism, any sort of collective thinking where people are just in lockstep with what they're told and do not question. I mean, that's what the Enlightenment was all about. It was about. Do you, do you study men? Do you study man? Do you look at men when they talk to you and study them? Uh. Uh, I, I take in neurological uh, signals. Yes. Do you ever watch? Do you ever watch Obama give a speech? What do you read on his face? Logical liar, psychopath, uh, and I wouldn't be sur- I wouldn't be surprised if he manifests what's known as the dark triad. Yeah. What is that? Uh, animal torture, bedwetting. Uh, hold on. Now, now we're now we're going in. Well, hold it. Now we're going into weird areas. I would limit it to this. When I see him speak and I look at the man's eyes, I see a gaze that is demonic. 
I see an, an almost insane gaze coming back at me, and it is so powerful that I have to turn away from the television set. I don't feel that way with other faces. What is it about Obama that gives him that, that almost that almost demonic look, if not purely demonic look? Because he knows he can get away with it. Because nobody is going to question him because they're afraid of appearing the R word. You know. What kind of president in the world would say, here's the deal. Now, Congress, no matter what you do, I will veto it. What kind of president takes that position in advance unless he himself is a dictator? What kind why, of does he, why does he take those positions instead of saying, and now I want my colleagues in Congress to study the deal, and I hope that you'll see it the way I do, and then when you do... It'll be a good thing for the world. Why did he threaten Congress the way he threatened the Supreme Court two weeks ago before both rulings? What does he hold over the heads of certain vulnerable members of Congress? We can only guess. Isn't that the answer? It's fear. Strictly fear. Hey, it's a pleasure talking to you. All right, my friend. Get back to the laboratory. Wendy Sherman. Gary on KSFO Radio. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Wendy Sherman, the fourth-ranking official in the State Department. This woman, when Hillary gets elected, she's, uh, she'll probably give Vietnam and, and Cuba nukes. Maybe we'll just hand them our nukes to make it fair. You know what I mean? Wendy Sherman was appointed to her current position by then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. She is the one who negotiated the deal with Iran. She's a former social worker, director for Emily's List. Uh, she is now retiring now that she's done her work for Iran. We have to wait and see where this left-wing goonie bird goes Michael. and see what her, rewar and see what her rewar reward will be. I don't know. You see, she's retiring since she's just done her work on the Iran nuclear talks. I'd like to see what she is going to get in, as a reward. That's what I'd like to see. It be said that Democrats are on the side of the criminals. When are people going to wake up to that? They're on the side of the criminals, domestic and foreign. Well, I feel the same way, but there's not much I can do about it. When you have the Department of Homeland Security asked by a sitting member of Congress today whether he's going to invite the parents of the slain young woman in San Francisco, and he mentions his name, and this moron, DHS, said, doesn't know who the, w the woman is, never heard her name. What does that tell you about the state of affairs in America? Virtually everything you need to know. Heroin dealer, Freddie Gray, they'll send three people to his funeral, but no one to Cape. How does that make sense? I don't know, my friend. I don't know. It's amazing. Look it up. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Wendy Sherman, she is the left-wing goonie bird who negotiated this deal with Iran, this terrible deal with Iran. She also was deeply enmeshed in the negotiations under Clinton with North Korea. How did that work out? How did that work out? WABC, Tim, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. Thanks for having me on, Dr. Savage. I just want to make a point. <clears throat> the point is that Obama, as well as the Mullahs, are utilizing Tatya. They lie to advance Islam. I truly believe that. You cannot make deals with those people. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but that's what I see. Well, I, I would say Obama, write this down before it's lifted, before it comes out of my mouth. I would give o Obama a Golden Turban Award for what he did with Iran today. He gets the Golden Turban Award of the savage nation. Write it down. You'll hear it again, and no one will remember where they heard it from. Obama wins the golden turban because something's wrong with this picture, and all I could think about is the television show Homeland. All I can think about when I see this man and his demonic attempts to destroy America's middle class and the deals he's doing with the worst enemies America has seen in modern times, I see a man from the show Homeland. It's not a very pleasant picture to carry around tim thank you for the call that brings us to 45 minutes after the hour there are some other topics some of them not as important we know the deal with iran is a, a big issue the other issue that i brought up is planned parenthood official was taped discussing the sale of aborted baby body parts between lunch and sips of wine she has a name it's nucatola n-u-c-a-t-o-l-a it's a dr nucatola who in my opinion in my opinion now, one man's opinion by what I've seen, she would have been very comfortable working as Dr. Mengele's assistant. She talks about this. She says, yesterday was the first time people wanted lungs. And then, like I said, always as many intact livers as possible. People just want.
Some people want lower extremities too. I mean, that's easy. I don't know what they're doing with it. I guess they want muscle. It's an eight-minute video. You can look at the video. You can see this woman, if you want to call her a member of the human race, slurping wine and eating food, not knowing she's being taped. And if you don't get moved by this, whether you're for abortion or not for abortion, there is not a listener on this show who should not be appalled by the buying or selling of human body parts. And incidentally, the buying or selling of human body parts is a federal felony. The commercial traffic of body parts from an aborted baby is punishable by up to 10 years in prison and or a fine of up to $500,000. I'd like to know why the federal government has not moved to arrest the guilty individuals who are trading in baby body parts. We have become like Nazi Germany under this out of control, maniacal left-wing administration. It's that simple. Colin, KSFO Radio, I'll get to you when I go. Let's go to him right now. Go ahead, please, Colin. What's your point? Hey, uh, I, I believe everybody's being lied to, and all these bought for politicians are going to go on TV and praise this as a big victory for the nuke deal. It, it's, it's basically what Chamberlain did with Hitler. He gave him the Sudetenland. Oh, wait, call, uh, cool, hold on. Sir, didn't you hear the opening to my show? I played Obama, then Chamberlain. I guess you missed the opening, right? I, I did, yes. All right. Then what we'll do is have to play the opening again. I think I'm the only member of the American media who has any knowledge of history. I'm starting to believe that everyone else lives day to day and from one news story to the next. My opening was brilliant. I must say that only in America, only, only, uh, only this show does what should be done all over America. I played Obama and cut to Chamberlain talking about the Anglo-German agreement where there will never be war again. It's that simple. All right, would you like to talk about anything else on the Savage Nation? The phone number is 855-407-282. How about the end of boys and girls? How about uh, the fact that the pockmarked undershirt wearing Zuckerberg has a $250 billion market cap and he wants more money? How do you figure out that a man is greedy, a pig like Zuckerberg who runs Facebook, has a company with a cap of $250 billion, and he's lobbying around the clock for more H-1B visas to throw more American tech workers under the bus to bring in cheaper labor from India primarily. Why would Zuckerberg want to stab American tech workers in the back like this and bring in Indians who work for less money? What, is there no end to the insanity and the greed of Mark Zuckerberg? Think about it. Take a break. Back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The world is a much more dangerous place today than it was yesterday. The leading international powers have bet our collective future on a deal with the foremost sponsor of international terrorism. They've gambled that in 10 years' time, Iran's terrorist regime will change while removing any incentive for it to do so. In fact, the deal gives Iran every incentive not to change. As expected, Israel opposes the deal, and as expected, the American left supports the deal. What's unexpected here is that Russia supports the deal. Yesterday, Obama called, or let's say, was it a month ago that Obama called Putin Hitler? Didn't Hillary call Putin Hitler? Hasn't Obama run military equipment all through Europe to threaten Russia? Every other day we hear that Russia's our enemy, and now we see that Russia's behind the deal for Iran. So can you tell me which side Obama is on and what game he's actually playing today. The fact of the matter is that the world's going to change very rapidly right now. He's opened up relations with the terrorist regime of Cuba, and many Americans could care less about those locked in prisons for 30 years in Cuba. They're rushing to buy cheap prostitutes, cheaper rum, and cheaper cigars. They could care less. And some rusty old cars that they can restore here in Miami. Just remember, my friends, it's the big chase for the almighty dollar that's ruined many nations before. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I welcome a robust debate in Congress on this issue, and I welcome scrutiny of the details of this agreement. But I will remind Congress that you don't make deals like this with your friends. We negotiated arms control agreements with the Soviet Union when that nation was committed to our destruction. And those agreements ultimately made us safer. I am confident that this deal will meet the national security interests of the United States and our allies. So I will veto any legislation that prevents the successful implementation of this deal. The thug in the White House has told Congress, drop dead, I'll do what I want, no matter what you do, I'll veto it. What more do you need to know about the state of the United States of America than to listen to this man's... First of all, he was lying. You know, We negotiated with the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union at the time was not threatening to wipe America off the planet. Iran, as near as the other day, threatened to wipe America and Israel off the planet. So make no mistake about it. The comparison is false. Welcome to Hour 2. There's a former CIA analyst who works with the Center for Security Policy, who worked for 25 years with the CIA and the State Department House Intelligence Committee, who knows an awful lot more about Iran than I do. His name is Fred Flights. And he wrote an article that's posted on Fox News that I think you were, uh, is worth your, your attention. Iran nuclear deal much worse than experts predicted, he says. And he says why. Now, I can read it to you, but it's a long article. I'm going to read you a paragraph. He says, the nuclear agreement with Iran announced Tuesday was billed by EU, Iranian, U.S. officials as historic. It is that. It is a historically dangerous accord that will destabilize the Middle East by legitimizing the nuclear program of a radical Islamist state and a state sponsor of terror. The provisions of this agreement contain minor concessions by Iran, but huge concessions by the United States that will permit Iran to continue its nuclear program with weak verification provisions. You can study the rest yourself. We open it up now at 855-407-282. I have been also talking about a video that came out today that can make any strong man weep. It was an undercover video shot last summer by a pro-life organization called Center for Medical Progress, and it shows the chief medical officer of Planned Parenthood of America boasting on camera about how to abort a child intact so the child's body parts can be transferred and sold for medical and scientific research. Dr. Mengele would be proud of Dr. Nukatola, in my opinion, and you've got to watch the video. You will see this this creature, Dr. Nukatola, who I assume has parents, who should dread the day that they gave birth to this creature. This creature is gulping on food and sipping wine talking about baby body parts as though they're pieces of salami and bologna. She says a lot of people want intact hearts these days because they're looking for specific nodes. Then Dr. Mengele's spawn goes on and she says, yesterday was the first time people wanted lungs. And then, like I said, always as many intact livers as possible. People just want, some people want lower extremities too. I mean, that's easy. I don't know what they're doing with it. I guess they want muscle, as she then breaks for another glass of red wine and stuffing her ugly mouth with more food. You've got to watch this to see the country you're now living in. And I want to remind you that it's a violation of federal law to trade in the sale of baby body parts. And I would suggest that if we had a legitimate federal government, which we all know we don't, a legitimate federal government, which we all know we don't, they would invoke the U.S. Criminal Code where the buying or selling of human body parts is a federal felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison and or a fine of up to $500,000. Planned Parenthood, to me, 
is an extension of Dr. Mengele's work in Nazi Germany. That's my opinion. If you care to comment on any of these topics, go ahead and make my day. Let's begin uh, on line four. Pete on WJR in Detroit. Go ahead, please. What's your opinion? Um, this deal with Iran, the president and all his gang is saying there will be no war with Iran and they won't get nukes and this and that. But eventually we're going to go to war with Iran, I believe. And then they're going to have nuclear weapons. Then what? Well, what you're saying is they're going to violate the treaty and, and a future administration is going to have to take a military uh, position against Iran. And at that point, they'll be much more militarily able to defend themselves than they are now. Isn't that what you're saying? They're, going to, they're not going to do anything until they get their bomb developed. Then they're going to go hog wild. So why would Obama and Kerry and the left wingers working for them why would they want Iran to have this power? If I knew, I'd tell you. If I thought I knew, I'd tell you. I want to say one more thing, if you got a minute. Well, go ahead. Oh, um, remember you were saying earlier, the Israelis were saying Iran's going to get a bomb in two years, three years, four years, or however long? Yes, and it never came to pass, right. Uh, 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 the Israelis were putting a virus in the computers that were running them centrifuges that were screwing them up, and Iran couldn't figure it out till Snowden spilled the beans. So you're saying the Stuxnet virus was Israeli produced? Mossad did it? Uh, yes, yeah, someone on the Israeli side did it, and uh, Snowden spilled the beans when he let out all that information and took off to Russia. All right, my friend, I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca, which is intimately tied in with this Iran deal. You know, my novels are somewhat predictive in some regard, and I'd like you to look at it because you're going to see what I'm saying is going to happen. Pete from WJR, stay on the line. Ronnie on WABC in New York. I'm looking for the number here. Go ahead, line seven, Ronnie. What's on your mind? Hi, Mike. This is Ronnie. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to speak to you. I want to make a comment, one about uh, the Iranians, that there was a guy named Rafsanjani who was, the media always reported him as the moderate. This was back, I guess, in the 90s. And he's the one who originally coined the idea of putting the bomb on Israel. Do you recall that? Well, anyway, what's uh, the point? Hello, Mike? No, I mean, I don't understand your question. Your question made a statement rather than asking a question. What is it you're trying to say? Uh, I didn't know you wanted a question. I just wanted to make a comment. Sorry. Also, I want All right. Well, you posed it as I'm getting confused. Uh, he asked me a question, and I said, isn't that a statement? He said, yes, I just wanted to make a statement. Okay. You may, of course they want to wipe Israel off the map. But so does John Kerry, apparently. What, what, what is that? What, are you surprised by John Kerry's behavior after what he did in Vietnam? During the Vietnam War, the man has been a traitor for the day he appeared on the world stage. You know, you'll notice that I'm talking quietly today and not getting emotional. The days that I'm most emotional, I'm unemotional on the radio. Very subdued. I'm extremely subdued because getting emotional right now is not going to help anybody. The, the worst thing I saw today was the Planned Parenthood uh, Nazi tape. This, this creature, this creature, Dr. Nukatola stuffing her ugly fat face with food and slurping wine at a table. You know, I've often looked around at some of these, you want to call it yuppie restaurants, and I've looked at these blank faces of people in their 30s, some of them, and I say to myself, they look like they would let people be thrown into an oven. They don't look like they have souls to me. Many of them look like little Nazis to me. And I say, ah, don't get paranoid. And then I see here's one of these, you know, open restaurants, with the brick walls, with the big balloon glasses for the red wine, and the proper cutlery, and the right dishes, and the dancing waiters. And I say, here is one of them. Here is one of them slurping wine and forking food into her gills while talking about baby body parts without any qualms whatsoever. And so I had to control my emotions because I never talk about abortion. It's a no winning tie. It's not a topic that you can win with, especially today. And there's no position that you could take that someone's not going to disagree with you. But it is a federal crime to deal in the sale of baby body parts. Now, I suppose that if Hillary Clinton becomes president 
one of her first acts will be to eliminate that federal law. Just as Obama has legalized illegal aliens and is now wanting to release felons from prison and open relations with the terrorist state of Cuba and has done a nuclear deal with Iran, I'm sure that Hillary Clinton will raise the stakes and she will eliminate this antiquated federal law that prohibits the sale of baby body parts. And she will probably say that it's for the good of humanity that baby body parts be sold because the fetuses are dead anyway. And on that note, I'll take a quick break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let's... This is uh, uh, a very uh, important uh, moment. Uh, the president called me uh, late last night uh, to tell me that agreement had been reached. Uh, I applaud him and both Secretary Kerry and Secretary Moniz uh, for their extraordinary efforts in uh, bringing about uh, this conclusion. Um, Based on what I know now, and I will be being briefed uh, as soon as I finish addressing you, uh, this is an important step in putting the lid on Iran's nuclear program. The exact opposite is true. As we well know, she's a trained and skilled fabricator of reality. It's not an important step in putting a lid on Iran's nuclear program. It actually is a fast track to them becoming a nation armed with a bomb. Now, remember who they are. There are people who know a lot more about this than I do. This is a state sponsor of terror. Iran is currently sponsoring terrorist groups and currently destabilizing the Middle East. Did you hear this? They're going to gain billions of dollars now as the sanctions are list lifted. They will have free access to the international arms market. In addition, the terrorist state of Iran that o Obama, Kerry, and Hillary Clinton love, Iran refuses to sign ballistic missile arms control treaties. They will be able to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles. And what would they need ICBMs for? What in the world would this state of Iran need ICBMs for? Well, it's very simple. Right now, Iran's missiles can hit Europe. And if they get ICBMs, they could strike the United States with nuclear weapons. This is a deal you're, you're congratulating yourself on? Now, let's look at what former Senator Joseph Lieberman, Democrat, said at a House Foreign Affairs Committee this morning about Iran. One paragraph. I'm sure you can listen. Here's what he said. What began as an admirable diplomatic effort dissolved into a bilateral negotiation over the scope of that capability. The agreement ultimately allows Iran to become a nuclear weapon state and indeed legitimizes Iran's possession of nuclear weapons capability. This is a bad deal for America, a bad deal for Iran's neighbors in the Middle East, and a bad deal for the world. The fact of the matter is this has weakened the United States and international security. It increases the risk of nuclear proliferation, which is the opposite of what this devil in the White House has aimed to do. He, you know, Obama's been anti-nuke from the day he became president, but he's basically been anti-American nuke. He has been dismantling our nuclear weapons at a rate that you don't even know about, but I know about because I've been studying it, while letting other nations develop nuclear weapons. And by the way, this is going to set off an arms race in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia is reportedly buying nuclear weapons from Pakistan. Did you know that? Did you understand that? Other regional nations are likely to begin enriching uranium and building heavy water reactors as a result of the devil in the White House. And there's nothing that you or I can do about it because we have no representation. This is no longer a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It is a government of the sheeple, by the people, and not for the sheeple. If we had a U.S. Congress, there would be a strong message today and a strong message to the mullahs of Iran that they will reject this agreement and that any future Republican president will terminate this agreement on his or her first day in office. That is what an opposition party should be doing in the United States of America. Moreover, all of you, let us say, starry-eyed liberals who think this is a good thing because it averted war. Well, what war? What war did it avert? What war did it avert? Right now, Iran has no military to speak of. 
It's a powerless nation. It's a paper tiger. It's actually a paper tiger cub. It has a very weak military, could not wage war. Iran could be nullified in 24 hours by United States, a United States if it had a real commander in chief. And so if you want, wanted to nullify Iran's nuclear ambitions, you do it when they're weak, not when they have a nuclear weapon. Once Iran has a nuclear weapon or more than a single weapon, and we don't even know if they don't already have one hidden in an underground vault, we don't know that. How do we really know what this group of mullahs have and have not? We know that their religion requires them or permits them to lie to get their way. It's embedded in their religious doctrine, which is to lie to non-Muslims to get your way. Did you know that? Oh, you didn't get that in high school, huh? While you were learning about the dangers of global warming, you didn't learn about the dangers of radical Islam. That didn't come along with the lesson. And so what I say is this. We're all opposed to war. Nobody wants to go to war. War is hell. We all oppose war. But if you're dealing with a terror state that will eventually go to war with you, wouldn't you rather go to war with them when they're weak rather than when they're strong? Well, that's what you would do if you were not Barry Obama. If you weren't Barry from Honolulu, that's what you would do. There's much more to this picture than meets the eye. We don't really know who is pulling the strings, but we do know this is a great day for Tehran and a terrible day for Main Street USA. Marianne on WABC, go ahead. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, I'm calling in answer to a question you queried quite a while ago in your show. First of all, I agree with everything you say, and I'm extremely upset. But you asked a question as to why religious Jews uh, don't very often don't believe in the state of Israel. And the answer is, as I know from no, no, my... No, 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 I didn't say I, all religious Jews. No, no, you, I didn't say all religious Jews. I said there's a sect of Orthodox religious Jews who do not believe in the creation of the state of Israel, or they actually believe it was, it was a terrible tragedy. There's only one sect that believes that. Well, that particular sect doesn't believe it, be, uh, doesn't believe in the state of Israel, because until the Messiah, this is their belief, until the Messiah sets his foot down, and he'll be coming, according to them, then wherever he places his foot, in other words, they have no home until his foot is placed on... All right, they're sugar In Jewish, that means crazy. These are crazy people. We'll talk about who the Messiah really is when we come back. I mean, it's as good a diversion as any because I had a discussion with three rabbis about it last week at a hidden location, and I'll tell you what I think. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Savage. All right, here we go. Look, I'm a strange bird because I mix religion and politics on this show on a fairly regular basis. You know that. Instead of avoiding religion or talking about it in a generic sense, I actually embrace religious topics. And this deal with Iran goes to what I was talking about two weeks ago. Remember, I took a week off, was in L.A. I told you I meditated. I told you I was dealing with what I thought were concepts of mysticism, which sounds like BS to you. I get it. We're all cynical. I'm cynical. You're cynical. We're all cynics. But I was thinking again about some of the mystical leanings that I have. And what was it? What did it mean that the same day Obama turned the White House into a rainbow house with a light show that stunned America because it represented maybe 1% of the population and he hijacked the White House for the sake of this 1% turning it into a rainbow light show. The very same day in Tunisia, a member of the uh, organization known as ISIS, the neo-Nazis of our time in a headscarf, uh, executed tourists, mainly British, with a machine gun on a beach in Tunisia. So I said, that was God. There's God's hand involved. God is, is doing something on the earth. He's teaching us a lesson. He's showing us something. And then today we wake up, and after getting every victory imaginable domestically, this demonic president of ours celebrates a deal with Iran and then warns Congress that they shouldn't override it because he'll, he'll uh, veto it in advance, no matter what they do. He's intent on giving Iran the ability to develop a nuclear weapon, according to experts. You say, well, no, it's peaceful use of nukes. We know that's rubbish. They're racing ahead with developing a nuclear bomb. So I ask myself, if God's hand is involved, why is God doing this to the world right now? I know you say, ah, who cares? Let's talk politics. 
you can't talk about politics in times like this without thinking about theology and without thinking about God. Where is God's hand? In other words, if you believe in God, where is God now that America is being destroyed from within and externally by this demon and the demonic people around them on an almost minute-by-minute basis? Where is God? Where is God? Illegal aliens are being released in the streets. Those with pointy boots and sombreros are basically laughing at us as they pour over the border into this country, not all coming here to work. And a drug kingpin is released from prison and we're supposed to believe it happened on its own. And he threatens Donald Trump for saying what's real about illegal immigrants. Even though Donald Trump's been misquoted a thousand times by the lynch mob in the media. The little lynch mob, the Lilliputian lynch mob. Where is God's hand? So I had this discussion two weeks ago with three very orthodox rabbis, not the Woody Allen type of rabbis, not the, <laughs> you're not a Vango. No, I'm sorry, I'm using a parody, that's good. I ran away from Reform Judaism. It turned my stomach. It had no religion in it. It was a social club. So I, I was never, I'm not, a, I'm not a temple kind of guy. I've always been spiritual. But when I do indulge in religion, I tend to go for the orthodox, whether it's in Christianity when I go to church, which I've done, by the way. Many Jews don't know that. I went to the uh, Grace Cathedral on Christmas Eve because I think it's a beautiful ritual. I think Christianity is a beautiful religion. And so I asked three orthodox rabbis to come see me and talk with me about mysticism and what my role might be. What is God's hand in this? And again, I'm going to pull the curtain back on a very personal meeting I had that virtually nobody has seen except a very few people in that room. And I'd like you to listen in on a two-minute piece on this issue of where is the Messiah on the savage nation. A mystic is connecting to God. Period. Period. And not seeing the world the way the world sees the world, but seeing the world how it's God's world. And there's a message in here, and, there's, and, and God's carrying us, and there's nothing to worry about. Mm. If you can elevate yourself, that is mystical. That is you're looking beyond the veil of the world, and you're living in a higher reality. And that is the Moshiach, the concept of Messiah, that we believe in. It says there's 13 principles of faith in the of these rites. I believe there's a God. I believe he listens to when we pray. I believe he gave us the Torah we have. The 12th and 13th principle. The 12th principle is, I believe in the coming of Messiah. And even though he will harry, I will always believe that he's coming. Isaiah said it 2,000 years ago. The Rebbe said it. We believe it's going to happen. Well, the Christians believe that Messiah is coming. The, the, even the Muslims say the Messiah is coming. You know, this is what is... What is the Messiah? To me, this is why I depart from Hasidism, because I can't believe in it rationally. There's no such, it makes no sense to me. I think that there's a Messiah within all of us, and the message got lost. And I think that we have to bring the Messiah out in ourselves, then to make it a perfect world. That is exactly what you're saying now, is exactly what the Rebbe said. He did? He said that everyone had a Messiah in him, and he got to reveal that, and that's how the world will become. Then there's the Messiah. And we're Messiah. all a piece of that Messiah. You know, sometimes, uh, Dr. Michael, you have moments of clarity. Yes, I can feel it sometimes. Sometimes you look at the world in a clear way, and there's, you're uplifted, you're on a high. That's messianic. When you're sitting with Rabbi Langer, praying Yom Kippur, or, there's certain moments. That's the Messiah in all of us. Well, I was quite surprised to learn after many years of turning away from this messiah talk saying that's nonsense that what there's some guy's going to come back or this i don't believe in it and i said the messiah exists in all of us now, i know christians don't accept that and now i find out that maybe maybe just maybe the true understanding of what and who the messiah is to religious jews in the hasidic movement have it wrong uh, according to that rabbi i have it right that there's a piece of the Messiah in all of us, and that if all of us were to tap into that, it would be a, I don't know, a better world, I suppose. I just thought I would share that with you because it doesn't lead us to conclusions that you don't already have, and we don't have any new revelation from that. Is there a new revelation from what you just heard? 
What would the revelation be from what you just heard? I'm not asking you to like me more or like me less, believe in the show more, believe in the show less. But I wanted to share with you because that was a, a very important moment in my life that uh, is still resonating. I think it's going to have a much deeper effect upon me as the months and years go by and I look back upon that meeting. Because it's not one that I've ever had in my life before and I don't know if I'll have another one again. I may or may not. I may. I may or may not. It revitalized my soul in some ways and I would like more of that rather than less of that. But bringing back ourselves back to the issues of the day, the news of the day, and not making it so personal. What the heck is this Iran deal about? Why would God permit this fanatical left-wing administration to strike a deal with the devil? Why? Where is God's hand in all of this? And you let, then I ask yourself, is Israel going to act? Is Israel going to have to blow up the nuclear sites and invoke the wrath of the whole world? Make no mistake about it, Israel's hated anyway. Israel's hated by everyone right now because this is the way it is. This is the way it has been. This is the way it always will be. Uh, strangely enough, though, Israel has a new ally or two. As a result of the demonic administration, Saudi Arabia, once its enemy, is now its friend. You talk about the lamb lying down with the lion. If that's not biblical, I'd like to know what is. Yeah, you could see God's hand in that. He took a lifetime enemy of Israel, Saudi Arabia, and made Saudi Arabia the best friend of Israel. That's what your devil has done. That's what he has done. He has put Saudi Arabia and Israel as allies because he is so twisted and upside down in his view of the world. That's right. That's what he has done. So you could say the lamb has lied down with the lion. I don't know who the lamb is and who the lion is. But the fact of the matter is that I believe that Israel has to act, and I don't know whether they will. They have to, doesn't mean they will. I don't know if they have the guts to act. Moreover, I don't know if they're, if let's take the, the, the DEFCON 10 situation, and let's say Israel launches a strike. They plan it, I'm sure they planned it a thousand times, and they fly over friendly airspace in order to limit the refueling required to get there and get back. And they use the heaviest weapons they can get their hands on. Can they really reach the underground facilities that Iran has built into mountains? Can they really cripple their desire to develop a nuclear weapon? And what would the ram ramifications be of such a bombing mission? Tell me what would happen. These are questions for which there are answers, and I'm sure that uh, intelligence agencies have worked on these scenarios you know, in, in war games, I have not. I'm just one man. So I, I hesitate to just lay it out in two seconds without thinking it through. But I'm sure people are thinking it through because there's no question in my mind Israel may act. I don't know that they will. And they may. But then again, they may not. And then, of course, you know, if they do act, who gets the blame for being a warmonger? All of the left-wingers who hate Jews and hate Israel uh, will suddenly say, see, we told you so. Because to them, the only good Jew is a dead Jew. They like the Woody Allen kind of Jew. They like the Larry David kind of Jew. But a militant, manly Jew, a Jew of the Bible, a Jew like David, is the enemy of the left. I never put it more clearly than I just did. Would you like to put it clearly? The phone number is 855-407-282. Al, on WABC. Al, give us your opinion. Fire away. Yeah, how you doing, uh, Dr. Savage? It's a pleasure to talk to you. Let's start. Look, Al, I, I'm not angry. When anyone gets on the show, please don't ask me how I'm doing and don't say it's a pleasure and, and it's an honor. Just give us your point, please, Al. Please, your point. First of all, what you just said right now is right on the money. And I think it's both the balance between the philosophical concept of, the, of God's relationship to the world and in Judaism, and I could give you a number of books to read on that, as well as uh, the military uh, reality. Uh, but wait, you're going in circles. You're making generic statements. Can you give us a single statement? Here's the point. The point simply is, when we fought the war in 1991 against Iraq, 10 years earlier, Israel struck the reactor in Oz Iraq. And you say, you know, the idea of a, of a Jewish state that can actually perform military operations that could be extraordinarily successful. They were panned by everybody, including the United States, that Oz Iraq was obliterated. In 1991, we went to war against Iraq in Kuwait. We did not have to worry about 10 years 
of Iraq having that nuclear reactor and how many tactical missiles they would have had on the battlefield. You, you mean we didn't have to wait, wait? You mean we didn't have to worry about Iran having a weapon? No, about Iraq having it. Iran is the same thing. It's the same nonsense. Let me just explain one thing, and then, then please, if you can uh, give me a, a slight amount of latitude. It's a complex topic. I read an article in Time magazine about a year or so, and I was military. I was a military commander, and I'm also an Orthodox Jew. I read an article in Time magazine that talked about the reactor in Iraq. You know what the name of that reactor was? And it was, it was written in a small, like, sentence that nobody would even catch a piece of it. They called it the reactor. The Arabic name for that reactor was Tammuz 17. You know what Tammuz 17 was in Jewish history? No. Tammuz 17 in history, Jewish month of Tammuz on the 17th day is a fast day in Jewish history. Oh, oh last week was Tammuz, right, it was a fast day. And what does it signify, though? And why? It was the day the Babylonians broke the walls of Jerusalem and seized the city. That's what happened. So if you have an enemy like Iraq that builds a reactor and names it, essentially, the destruction of Jerusalem, you don't got to be a rocket scientist to understand where they're coming from. But wait, you know, now you're talking about Iraq right now. Well, hold it. You miss, I think you're confusing people. Are you talking about Iraq now or Iran? I'm talking about what we did to Iraq. We fought the war in 91 after the Israelis destroyed the reactor that Iraq named to destroy Israel. That reactor being destroyed saved the United States militarily from going against integrated battlefields, a battlefield which would have tactical nukes on the ba- uh, 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 that would be arrayed against them. All right, so, so let, 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 you're, in, you're a man who knows more about this than I do. Why did Obama sign this deal then? He's an idiot. That basically, he, doesn't, he understands nothing about religion, which when I hear your commentary, you know, you know I, I, I studied uh, Kabbalah, I studied Talmud for a number of years. I could be on the phone with you for hours, but I won't. Obviously. But I said <laughs> something. I said, you, know, you, you get the... Yeah, but I think to characterize Obama as an idiot is making a big mistake. I don't see an idiot. I see a demonic individual who knows exactly what he's doing. The question is, why is he doing this? He's doing this because philosophically the left believes that the third world causes of uh, socialistic philosophy and totalitarianism has merit above democracy and, uh, and the free world. I think deep down inside, he has no pride in being an American. He does not appreciate the, constant, the, the, the Constitution, and he does not have respect for the concept of liberty, which, as a biblical point of view, where it says in, in Leviticus, O Karasim, draw the Kalarit, thou shalt proclaim liberty throughout the land, he doesn't get it. I wow. Don't think that's where he is. Well, uh, there, yeah, we could talk for hours. And if you'll stay on the line, Al, we'll talk again for a few minutes about this uh, memorable deal with Iran and how it, com- it, it it's actually beyond that of Neville Chamberlain with Adolf Hitler. The minute I return in the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800 B U Y C O I N. After two years of negotiations, the United States, together with our international partners, has achieved something that decades of animosity has not. A comprehensive, long-term deal with Iran that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. And so the comparison with Neville Chamberlain is an apt comparison, of course. Of course, nothing is direct. I mean, like you say, a comparison. A comparison is only a comparison. It's not an exact, exact duplicate. But we do know what Hitler did the day after the so-called agreement with uh, the non-aggression pact with, with England was signed. I think they invaded uh, Czechoslovakia or Poland the next day. And as you know, the next day after this agreement, before the ink is dry, Iran is the racing to develop a nuclear bomb. Because if you think a Mexican drug lord is bad and vicious, you're right. Now, if you take a Mexican drug lord and magnify him by a thousandfold and wrap him in a religion which justifies the beheadings and the bombings, then you have Iran's leadership. 
What sane nation on earth would do a deal with them? And look at Obama's eyes on television and tell me you don't see the eyes of a demon. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Today, because America negotiated from a position of strength and principle, we have stopped the spread of nuclear weapons in this region. Because of this deal, the international community will be able to verify that the Islamic Republic of Iran will not develop a nuclear weapon. The deal that we have out there, in my view, uh, from what I know of it thus far, is unacceptable. We'll do everything we can to stop it. The Iranians are very good negotiators. The Persians are always great negotiators. They are laughing at us back in Iran. And why didn't we get our prisoners back? Why doesn't somebody say, where are our prisoners? Nobody's even talking about it. We have four people that are in prison that shouldn't be. Why couldn't they make that part of the deal? They have the blood of hundreds of American soldiers on their hands who they killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. And today, we are giving sanctions relief to organizations like the Revolutionary Guard Corps and men like Qasem Soleimani, the general that leads that corps who are responsible for killing American soldiers. One of the things that he would have said that would have assuaged me a little bit uh, would have been, but under no circumstances will the United States permit Iran to achieve a nuclear weapon. Uh, he didn't say that. I think I think any member of the Senate that votes for this deal, you're ensuring that the largest state sponsor of terrorism has more money, not less. Mm -hmm. They will have more weapons, not less. You're ensuring that one day they will have a nuclear weapon. You will own the outcome of this deal. This is a legacy issue for Obama. For every other Democrat, it is your future and the world's future. And Israel is not bound by this deal with Iran because Iran continues to seek our destruction. We will always defend ourselves. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. This is an historic day. Mark it down, 14th of July, 2015, when uh, the United States of America was sold down the river by a left-wing fanatic in the White House, surrounded by far-left radicals who have negotiated the most terrible deal imaginable. In fact, this came out 16 minutes ago. The Saudis made a statement, which you haven't heard yet even on Fox News. Saudi Arabia said Iran's nuclear deal will make the Middle East a, quote, more dangerous part of the world, if it comes with too many concessions, a Saudi official told Reuters, signaling the Gulf Arabs deep on ease over the accord that Obama basically rushed to sign. The Saudis and their Gulf allies fear that the deal by ending Iran's pariah status and freeing its economy from crippling sanctions will embolden Tehran to step up its backing for their foes across the Middle East. Saudi authorities offered only terse public comment on the Vienna deal 10 hours after it was announced, but officials privately are making it clear that their misgivings about it, its likely impact in a region where the Sunni Muslim kingdom has long competed with Shiite Iran for influence. They acknowledge that the deal would mean a happy day for the Middle East if it stopped Iran from gaining a nuclear arsenal, according to the Saudi official. However, he said he feared the deal would instead allow Iran to wreak havoc in the region. He told Reuters, we have learned as Iran's neighbors in the last 40 years that goodwill only led us to harvest sour grapes. Put that into your bung and smoke it, all of you left-wing idealists. You may think that we're not going to war, and this is peace now. And it's good to have peace now, but it's also to recognize who your enemies are and recognize it's better to fight your enemies when they're weaker rather than stronger. And never, ever forget for one minute that the so-called Islamic Republic is a terror-sponsoring state that has killed hundreds of our soldiers and has conspired against America for at least 30 years. Make no mistake who did this deal, make no mistake who the deal was done with, and make no mistake that this deal is only beginning. It's not ending the terror in the world. That's my opinion. 
The phone number is 855-407-282. Let's go immediately to the callers. Joe on line six on KKOB Radio. Welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Joe? Hi, Mike. Uh, yeah, listen, I just want to agree with you that this, this uh, deal with Iran is absolutely terrible. It will not prevent them from gaining a nuclear uh, weapon. Uh, but what, what's, what's even scarier right now at the moment is the fact that Iran does have enough nuclear materials for a dirty bomb, which as a state sponsor of terror, uh, they could easily supply to someone to smoke, uh, to sink across the border, which I think everyone knows that. But here's the kicker I want to add, and that is, in Southern California, I know you said you were back there about a week ago, um, in Southern California, in the Los Angeles area, there are several uh, active Hezbollah sympathizers and actors. That's not propaganda, that's not, you know, conspiracy theory. In fact, it, the threat is so real. Let well, were they invited to the White House to break hummus with the president? To break pita bread with the president, I'm surprised they haven't been seen in the White House. Yeah, I know. Doesn't he re doesn't he reach out to all the enemies of America and turn them into our best friends? And doesn't he turn all of our best friends into our enemies? Isn't that his way of doing things? That's what you get when you have an ideologue in power. But uh, if you if you check with San Bernardino, San Bernardino County and L.A. County, less than two years ago, they put on an all day seminar for state, local, and federal law enforcement on the threat of this Hezbollah presence in Southern California, specifically Los Angeles County and San Bernardino County. Yes, but that was then. This is now. We have a doofus as Homeland Security Secretary, Jed Johnson, who was grilled today about the illegal alien who killed a young lady in San Francisco, and he didn't even know the name of the person who was killed. He was sitting in like a dummy. He doesn't even know what's going on around him. I, I agree 100%. This is what happened. Where did they get this guy from? Where did this jester, Jed Johnson, come from? How could he get away with it? He looks like he doesn't know what the hell is going on around himself, let alone what's going on in the, in the world. He's in charge of Homeland Security. He melted our borders down with Mexico. What more do you need to know? Yep. Okay, my friend, thanks for the call. That's all there is to it. WMAL, we haven't heard from anyone in Washington, D.C. today. Scott, line five, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, Doc, great to talk to you. Um, a real simple question. Wouldn't we have been in a better position to oppose this uh, Iranian deal if we never passed the Corker bill? Uh, you're asking a question. I don't even know all of the points. Make your point rather than putting me into a Talmudic discussion. I'm sorry, just a couple quick points. If, if the Republicans never passed the Corker bill, which gave them permission to review the uh, agreement, uh, you... We could have just sat back and, you know, we would have needed a two-third majority to, to pass the thing, and the next president could just nullify it. Um, after they passed the Corker bill... Okay, I get what you're saying. Now only Obama needs one-third of Congress to override with a veto. I get it. They weaken their position of power by letting that go through, right? Yeah. You, you need okay, got it. Yes, absolutely. And he threatened Congress today, by the way. And what the Saudis said should be... You bear it, Pay close attention. Listen to what the director of the Center for American Studies at Riyadh's Institute of Diplomatic Studies said just 15 minutes ago. The great Satan and the Europeans have surrendered to Iran. The terrorist Iran has proved that it is in the right and they are in the wrong. He joked that it only, are you listening, remained for the United States to visit the grave of Iran's late revolutionary leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, to, quote, ask for his blessing. They went on and they said, it is clear now that Americans are following their interests, irrespective of any historic promises given by the former leaders of both countries. Now the Obama administration is just looking at the Ayatollahs, said Moshen Alawaji, a Saudi Sunni Islamist activist. This is what you get when you take a backstabbing secretary of state like John Kerry, who has never told the truth in his entire adult life, and a President Obama who has never loved America running the United States of America. They have now taken our number one ally in the Middle East, Israel, and our number two ally in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and turned them into adversaries and instead have embraced the terrorist nation of Shia Iran. So you ask yourself now, what does this tell you about the bigger picture? Well, it tells you a lot if you want to study it carefully, and we don't have the time to go into it in great detail. Remember that um, uh, Islam is divided into two primary sects, the Sunnis and the Shia. We all kind of know that by now. We don't know what it's about. 
It's something about the 11th, 12th century when someone, that only those who are descended from uh, Muhammad can do this and those who didn't descend. And they've been killing each other and blowing each other up over this for 800 years to show you what the religion of pieces is all about. All right. Nevertheless, Saudi Arabia is our ally and Iran has been our enemy for 40 years or more, right? Ever since they took the hostages under the other great genius, Jimmy Carter. Now we wake up and suddenly Obama has made Iran our dancing partner and has turned Saudi Arabia into the ugly girl at the school dance. Think about that. Think about why he's aligned himself with uh, Shia Iran and why he has given the middle finger to Sunni Iran and then trace that line all the way into the Oval Office, trace the line right back to his principal advisor, a little lady from Chicago with deep ties to Iran named Valerie Jarrett. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey. Uh, welcome back to the Savage Nation. I have a correction to make. In my last monologue at the end of the last segment, I mistakenly said Sunni Iran when I meant to say Sunni Saudi Arabia. Okay? I caught it afterwards because I do not read a script. No scripts are written for me in the morning uh, before I arrive at the microphone. It's all based upon my readings of the day and my ongoing studying of the news as uh, the show develops. Nobody writes my script, unlike some in radio who have whole notebooks in front of them with uh, they, they ridicule Obama for having a teleprompter there are those in talk radio you wouldn't know it without teleprompters there'd be no show at all I don't use a teleprompter and speaking of the demon in the White House what's astonishingly heartbreaking and quite racist to me yes and I'll use the word racist to me is the fact that in three cases where there were black victims of violence he gave a policy speech demanding a Department of Justice investigation. Freddie Brown, the guy in Baltimore, which led to the burning of the city. Was it Michael Brown? I don't remember what Brown's. Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, and one other. He got up and he pompously talked about a Department of Justice investigation into their deaths. He has thus far made no comment about the murder by the Mexican illegal alien of this young woman, in San Francisco's sanctuary city, so-called. Why is that? Why is it that this president of ours is concerned only with the deaths of some and not the deaths of others? Why would he say that if he had a son, he would look like Trayvon Martin? Is it because Catherine Steinle wouldn't look like a daughter of his, that he's not interested in it? What does that tell you about the man? And what does that tell you about my observation? That when I look in Obama's eyes on television, I have to turn my eyes away. I think I'm looking into the eyes of a devil. Betsy on WJR, what do you make of this? Am I the only one who sees this look in his eyes? Michael, um, others who have no moral compass, like yourself, like me, like a handful of us. Wait, wait, wait. You mean others who have no moral compass like us? Moral compass compass will not reflect back what you and I and others see. Obama has no moral compass. He has what's called what we call in Judaism, and I know you'll you've heard this, the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination. Others who possess this as well are not going to reflect back uh, goodness, let's say, or or, or possess religion or a moral compass of any kind. If they did, they wouldn't be able to help but to be able to see it. I see it just as you described it. I, I have a man who sent me an email who said his wife turns away from the television when Obama speaks, that her heart literally stops when she looks at his eyes. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts that that, that is a, a woman of religion, whatever religion she is. may be. She's a deeply religious Christian, correct? Yeah, so I would guess that. Uh, I, I want to make another comment, though. This is, a, this is a, actually, I want to answer a question you asked. You asked if you had elucidated anything in the minds of any listener uh, relative to your response on uh, the, Messiah, the Messiah being part of all of us. And you did in me, because it took me back to my Hebrew school days when we were explained to, as little children, that if we would observe 
the mitzvot and the Ten Commandments and keep the Sabbath, that one day when every Jew would be an observant Jew, the Mashiach or Messiah would return. And now I think I understand, based on what you said, what they were trying to teach us, that if each one of us would, would adopt uh, these rules of behavior, that's when he will come back. And that proves that we're each a piece well, of But it's not that he will come back. He will exist within all of us, collectively. We become him. That was my point. Because, exactly. However, in other words, in other words there's, no re, there's no returning from death. No one rises from the grave in, 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 in the human flesh. I, I mean, that's my opinion. And, and this, is my, this, is, this is the problem I have with uh, people who believe in the return of a Messiah. God is telling us that we have a messianic component of our beings. And when all of us move in that direction, the Messiah returns then and there. But I think that's too esoteric for a radio uh, audience. It's too esoteric for an audience that likes Geraldo Rivera uh, threatening to punch somebody out who he disagrees with on Fox News uh, and not getting any ramifications from it. It's too esoteric for a country that's interested in which slut fell down on Hollywood Boulevard bearing what portion of her flesh as though she herself and she herself only uh, owns that type of flesh. No one else on earth has any woman components other than she. It's very difficult in this world of the flesh merchants of Hollywood and the purveyors of tabloid journalism. The Jerry Springers of our time own all of the media. It's very difficult in these times to talk about spiritual things without being laughed out of the theater. Okay, so I introduce it very delicately and now I withdraw it just as delicately. This is the Savage Nation. I also talked about the sale of baby body parts by uh, an individual. You have to see the tape. It's an underground tape, a secret tape, and you'll see uh, Hitler's descendant. You will see a young woman who was the chief doctor, the chief doctor for Planned Parenthood. Her name is Dr. so-called Nuka Tola. I do not know her background. I have no idea who her parents were to have raised such a monster. But she sits there chomping on food and sipping wine in a yuppified restaurant somewhere, not knowing she's being taped, as she talks about the body parts of aborted babies between bites of lunch and sips of wine, saying a lot of people want intact hearts these days because they're looking for specific nodes. And then she said they want as many intact livers as possible. Some people want lower extremities too as she gulps her wine. It's an eight-minute video released by the Center for Medical Progress. All I can say is God bless them for doing the work of human beings. This is astounding. And I think the full extent of federal law should be brought against this woman and Planned Parenthood. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Just as Obama has written off the uh, young woman who was assassinated, executed in the streets of San Francisco because she's not the right race, remember that he, he went and talked to the families of uh, several victims in the past who were of uh, the same race as he after they were murdered or found dead. He has not even sent a representative to the Steinle family to talk about the death of their daughter at the hands of the illegal alien from Mexico. I know this is an embarrassing situation and many people don't like hearing these things and it makes them uncomfortable. But it seems to me that there's a racial component to which situations Obama gets involved in and it's kind of frightening when you consider he's conducting a war. And it's not a war against terror regimes like Iran, is it? It's a war against America's white middle class in my estimation. Everything that I see leads me to believe that he wants to fracture the white middle class in this country before leaving office. Now, you could argue with me, and I hope you will, by proving me wrong. I don't see how you can prove me wrong. In a weird, weird interview with the so-called head of the Department of Homeland Security, a man who nobody knows who he is, where he came from, perhaps the dumbest man in the history of the world, they put a suit on this moron. Jed Johnson, DHS, they ask him, they ask this idiot, stooge of Obama, about sanctuary city laws if they're violating federal law. And the moron says, I'm not aware. I don't know the answer. I have no idea. 
This is the country under the devil himself. Now let's go on to the other issues that have attracted my attention, which are many, and they can all be seen basically on my website, michaelsavage.com. And the first article on the top right is this. This Mexican drug lord has California driver's license. Gee, what's new about that? He has a California driver's license? They print them in basements all over California. If I want to renew mine, I have to wait for th about three, six, eight hours in the Department of Mexican Voting booth. That's what they've turned it in on the Governor Brown. The Department of Mexican Voting. It's not a DMV anymore. It's a Department of Mexican Voting. Next article, Iran to continue centrifuges and missile development. Nothing to stop them. Oh, I cried watching this Nazi BIT. Hitler had vermin like her killing Jews, I wrote. That's my headline for the YouTube. Take a look at Dr. Nukatola stuffing her fat, disgusting face with food and slurping wine, that pig, as she talks about the sale of baby body parts. And we have no legitimate government to move in and arrest these ghouls, none whatsoever. I am kind of strong when I read stories. I do this for a living. I've done it for 21 years. When I watched the chief doctor for this death-worshipping organization, Planned Parenthood, Dr. Nukatola, eating food, drinking wine, and boasting about selling baby body parts to who she thought were representatives of a startup biotech firm in the business of buying fetal body parts for medical and scientific research, I started to weep. A part of me started to weep looking at it. I felt that I was looking at Dr. Nukatola in, as the face of the new Nazi government. I felt that Planned Parenthood is an arm of Hitler's regime. I felt as I watched it that if we had a legitimate federal government, Dr. Nukatola would be indicted immediately for violating federal law which prohibits the sale of baby body parts. The eight minute edited video was released today by an amazing organization, the Center for Medical Progress. And this so-called Dr. Nukatola can be seen talking about a menu of parts that she is working on. The video shows what is purported to be an actual online form from STEM Express complete with a pull down menu for quote, brain, heart, veins and arteries attached, lungs, liver, liver and thymus, spleen, large intestine, and so on. The order form from these Nazis also specifies the gestational range of the unborn baby from four weeks upwards. This is a three hour video shot with Dr. Hitler Nukatola's knowledge in a California restaurant on July 25th last summer. You could watch it, I could play it for you, but I'd rather not. It's gonna make people sick. I'd like to know where the heart and soul of America is. We are not talking solely about abortion right now. We are talking about selling a baby's organs, live organs, just before they're crushed and sent to the trash bin. And these are girls and boys who went to college. These are the heartless, soulless ghouls of today. These are the Nazis of our time who would just as quickly put you into a concentration camp and sell your body parts if they could do it for a profit, in my opinion. Summertime, lighten up. We have a bug job in the White House who's out to destroy everything decent in the country. No one believes it. His ratings are through the ceiling. The worse the country gets socially, the happier the average person is because they want him to wreck everything. That's something you don't know. What do you want to do now? I don't, I'm tired of it all now. I don't want to do any more Trump. All I got is calls about Trump now. I, I'm, we know Trump's wonderful. We don't know if he's real. We don't know how long he's going to last, run, whatever. What a long time it is between now and the... And the Republicans suck. They're the worst in the history of the world. Everything he says is what the American people want to hear. That's why they hate him. He shook things up for the establishment, didn't he? But to go to the extent of uh, the others in insanity. The View co-host, uh, Raven Simone, says that it was Trump who actually set up the... I swear to God, this was on television. She said, this woman, Raven Simone, which I still don't know whether it is a medical syndrome or a person's name. I never trust anyone with a hyphenated last name to begin with. That's a holdover from people with l low self-esteem. They usually have hyphenated last names to make you think that they're more important than they are. But anyway, here's someone with a hyphenated last name on ABC who says Donald Trump killed Catherine Steinle in San Francisco. Listen to clip 28. 
Trump, 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 Trump it interesting that this happened as soon as Trump started to talk about this? He randomly found a gun from sure a federal agent. I'm criminal no. wasn't watching no, but just, CNN. I'm, but look at the news. They reported it. They should have been showing more of these beforehand. For instance, I just feel it's very interesting. And how do you feel about Trump talking about Hillary, about how she, if she's president, there's going to be just a flood of murders and a flood of things going on? Okay, now this is on television, this creature, this syndrome, Raven Simone. So she's implying that Donald Trump killed the girl and the woman in the streets of San Francisco because the gun was then this and that. It's a beyond belief. Can you imagine what we're living through? It's like a purge of intelligence in the United States of America. The audience probably left me already, but because all they want to hear is Trump, good, Trump, good, Trump, good, save America. Trump will say, hey, step right up. Step right up this way to the egress. Yes, that Trump save America. I hope so. You know, get back to me November, December. I'll let you know whether, how interested I am in the candidacies. Some already you know what I think of them. I told you who they were six months ago. I told you Rubio was a zero and he'd flame out. Bingo, gone. I said he was an ice cream man in Miami that they found with a vowel for a last name that they picked. The guys had nobody. Zero, nothing. What has he got to offer? Uh, president, President Marco Rubio. <laughs> no, can't see it. President Ted Cruz, great ideas, can't be president. Weasley voice, won't work, and shifty eyes, don't trust him. Sorry. And also he stabbed us on the trade deal, so that was already a show, a show thing. Now we got Scott Walker, who I backed three months ago. I don't know. I don't know who these guys are, where they get them from. Jeez. And what's the option? A her again? Fruit from the jungle floor again we got to have? Why her, of all Democrats, must it be her? Why must it be that creature from the Black Lagoon? Again, we didn't have enough of the Clintons? The dirt, the scandals, the deaths, the horrors, the selling the secrets to China. How much can we take of this? And who's on the Republican side? Who's left? Jeb Bush? You must be joking. The name Bush is toxic in America, by the way. It's a toxic name. The only person who likes the Bush name is Sean Hannity because he invited him to the White House for a corned beef and cabbage. That's it. No one else trusts the name. So I don't know which way to turn here. I mean, I, I, of course I'll take any Republican over these communists. I get it. Yeah, but what is the Republican going to do? We voted for them in November, I told you to vote. A lot of good it did. Look what we got. Huh. Okay, there's Fiorina. The name alone is a, is a, is a, is a death march. She's got to change her name to something like Francine. No one's electing anyone with a name like, okay, let's try Fiorina in clip 15. Let's hear Fiorina. Donald Fiorina. Trump taps into an anger that I hear every day. People are Good angry voice, huh? that a common sense thing like securing the border or ending mm -hmm. sanctuary cities is somehow considered extreme. It's not extreme. It's common sense. Right. We need to secure right. the border. People are okay. also angry at a professional political class of both okay. parties that talks a good game, gives good speeches, but somehow nothing ever really changes. And people are angry as well at a double standard in the media. She could win. Sanders is still running. The commie, Sanders from New York, the weasel. This guy, Sanders, is like a classic New York commie from the 1930s who uh, no one would listen to. They'd get a soapbox in Union Square, Manhattan, and they'd rail against capitalism. Look how far he's gotten. That's because they're importing communists into the country as rapid a pace as they can. If you import socialist people from socialist countries who want handouts... Of course Sanders will appeal to them because he says he's going to give you more handouts. But just for the fun of listening to the guy's voice, I love it in 25 and 26, run him. Run I him, think Sam. what the Pope has been saying in a very profound and deep way oh, come on. is that casino-type capitalism uh, and, uh, here's is a Jewish communist. Here's problems. a Jewish Bolshevik. Suddenly he's a lover of the Pope. I love this. I love this. Here's a guy who spit on the church his whole life in the most vile manner, hated the church, called everyone a molester, now all of a sudden, the Pope, the Pope, this is anti-capitalism. Unbelievable, you can't see two and two, you can't put two and two together. All of a sudden, the, 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 the Bernie Sanders loves the Pope. I love it. Now, if you care to chime in on this Iran situation, there's very little left to discuss with regard to this issue. People who know a lot more about it than I do, such as the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, says that the deal paves the way for Iranian for an Iranian bomb. 
There's nothing more I can add to that. They've seen the deal. I haven't seen the deal. Others, such as David Horowitz of the Times of Israel, say that the 16 reasons the nuke deal is an Iranian victory and a Western catastrophe can be spelled out in his article. And he spelled it out in his article, which you can read for yourself. And so I, as an ordinary and informed American who does this for a living, have very little to add to this discussion. What can I say? It's a good deal or a bad deal? I don't know. I would say any deal with a terrorist state is a bad deal. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. After two years of negotiations, the United States, together with our international partners, has achieved something that decades of animosity has not. A comprehensive long-term deal with Iran that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Total lie. This deal okay. demonstrates that American All right, turn diplomacy... It off, turn it off. All right, he's a liar, as you well know. It's simply to get it off the table and check it off on his list. Now, you have to know who negotiated this deal. It was not John Kerry. He is just the face of the negotiation. I want to give you a name... And I want you to remember the name. The name is Wendy Sherman. You don't know who Wendy Sherman is. She's a left-wing fanatic, a former social worker. She serves as the director of Emily's List, a radical left-wing political fundraising group aimed at getting, are you ready for this? Abortionists called Democrats elected. Emily's List fundamentally is composed of the same type as Dr. Nukatola, the Dr. Mengele's of our time. She was appointed to her current position in 2011 by Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State. And here's the kicker for you. Are you ready? Wendy Sherman also negotiated the North Korea deal. She first served in the State Department under the Clinton administration. There is a name behind this deal with Iran. Her name is Wendy Sherman, former social worker, director of Emily's List, a political fundraising lobbying group aimed at getting abortionists as Democrats, as women, elected. The thug in the White House has told Congress, drop dead, I'll do what I want, no matter what you do, I'll veto it. What more do you need to know about the state of the United States of America than to listen to this man's First of all, he was lying. You know, we negotiated with the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union at the time was not threatening to wipe America off the planet. Iran, as near as the other day, threatened to wipe America and Israel off the planet. So make no mistake about it. The comparison is false. There's a former CIA analyst who works with the Center for Security Policy, who worked for 25 years with the CIA and the State Department House Intelligence Committee, who knows an awful lot more about Iran than I do. His name is Fred Flights. And he wrote an article that's posted on Fox News that I think you, is worth your, your attention. Iran nuclear deal much worse than experts predicted, he says. And he says why. Now, I can read it to you, but it's a long article. I'm going to read you a paragraph. He says, the nuclear agreement with Iran announced Tuesday was billed by EU, Iranian, U.S. officials as historic. It is that. It is a historically dangerous accord that will destabilize the Middle East by legitimizing the nuclear program of a radical Islamist state and a state sponsor of terror. The provisions of this agreement contain minor concessions by Iran, but huge concessions by the United States that will permit Iran to continue its nuclear program with weak verification provisions. You can study the rest yourself. We open it up now at 855-407-282. I have been also talking about a video that came out today that can make any strong man weep. It was an undercover video shot last summer by a pro-life organization called Center for Medical Progress, and it shows the chief medical officer of Planned Parenthood of America boasting on camera about how to abort a child intact so the child's body parts can be transferred and sold for medical and scientific research. Dr. Mengele would be proud of Dr. Nukatola, in my opinion, and you've got to watch the video. You will see this, this creature, Dr. Nukatola, who I assume has parents, who should dread the day that they gave birth to this creature. 
This creature is gulping on food and sipping wine, talking about baby body parts as though they're pieces of salami and bologna. She says a lot of people want intact hearts these days because they're looking for specific nodes. Then Dr. Mengele's spawn goes on and she says, yesterday was the first time people wanted lungs. And then, like I said, always as many intact livers as possible. People just want, some people want lower extremities too. I mean, that's easy. I don't know what they're doing with it. I guess they want muscle. <laughs> 